Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Wednesday, Wednesday, April 17th. It is a rainy day here in the uh, here in the in the big city of Irma. Um, we've had quite a bit of rain already this morning. It uh, it it keeps coming down. I don't know. I don't know if it's raining where you're at, but um, right now I'm looking at at my weather station information, and um, it's showing that I've got I've had uh, three quarters of an inch so far today, over three quarters of an inch so far today, and and an inch and an inch and a quarter for the week so far. I don't I don't know that that tallies in. Um, all of the all of the data, but it has been it has been just incredible here. The the rainfall we've had. Um, here's the graphical representation of this. I'm, I don't know why I'm putting this on the screen. Maybe just because I can. Um, where'd it go? Where'd rainfall go? Here's wind speed. We had 20 mile an hour winds during the night last night. Um, this is this is the temperatures. Here's the rain. Here's the rain. So, at like uh, 1,900 hours last night, which would be um, 1,900, 12 plus 7, so 5, 5.30 it started raining, uh, and it rained until until uh, just before midnight, 23.55, so just before midnight, we had uh, almost four-tenths of an inch then, and then this morning it's just gone through the roof, uh, started raining at about... Uh, uh, four o'clock this morning and up till now and it's it's uh, that's 7 15 must have stopped raining since I've been uh, oh no it's just the graph went up higher there we go so we we've hit uh, uh, right now it's coming down at a quarter of an inch an hour uh, still at this moment so it's just quite a bit of rain that's that's um, that's come in here this morning so we need it. Um, I'm okay with it, as uh, long as it doesn't start turning into running runoff and flooding. But we're in in need of rain. So so good morning. Glad you're here with us on this Wednesday. Um, I see one viewer over on on YouTube. It's not me, so I'm guessing that's John and Jill. Good morning to you guys, both places, wherever you are, and and others on Facebook or YouTube, uh, YouTube and Facebook. If you're watching later today or whatever, I'm glad you're you're here with us. Uh, take a little time in in God's Word. Uh, but on Facebook, Al, good morning to you. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Geraldine and Neil, hello. Connie and Robin, good morning. I don't know. Um, yeah, it could be. Was your was your radio in the car turned off? Because if you know some newer cars, uh, if your phone connects, it connects both for the uh, to use it as a speakerphone, the telephone, uh, but also for audio. Neither one of the cars I have connect the audio. I have a separate Bluetooth tooth device for connecting the audio but that that could be jill and john good morning to you guys yes much needed rain you are you are right april showers bring may flowers so um yeah I, 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 honestly i'm not thrilled with with a a gray dismal rainy cool day um but we we need it and so that's that's okay that's all right now i'll get i'll get through it Deb, Grant, and Ann, good morning to you guys. Renee, good morning. Mushtaq, good morning and good evening. And Glenn, good morning. And everyone else, good morning. Hello, greetings. I'm glad you're, you're here with us. Let's go ahead and get right into what we have on tap for today. It's Wednesday, my busy day. I've got classes. Oh, hey, Marv, good morning. And Wetsteins, good morning uh, to, to you and to Karen, uh, Michael. Um, yeah, I'm Bible history class today, and I've got a couple of visits I got to do this morning, and so it's kind of a kind of a busy day. Alexander is on a um, uh, what do you call it a uh, uh, remote learning day. Uh, the the uh, freshman and sophomore at uh, THS uh, are are um, taking their pre SAT test today or pre ACT. I think it's the SAT. And so, in an effort to to minimize distractions to the students taking the tests, they they clear out everybody else. The 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 uh, 
juniors and seniors have a have a remote learning today um, and uh, so yeah that's a that's a new thing right I only since COVID have we had uh, remote learning as a possibility that way the school can clear out the students and still consider it a, a full full school day I mean, play a little game there but Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. If you've got your Lutheran service book, or if you don't, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order, as we begin here on this Wednesday, April 17th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Just realized I got my, my screens wrong here. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at uh, 2 Samuel, because I was prepping stuff for the class I have today, but I don't want 2 Samuel, I want Daily Devotions, which will come up here in a second. And there we go. Daily Devotions for this Wednesday. Our, our psalm today, Psalm, oops, Psalm 100, what? No, it's Psalm 118. Why are you on Psalm 96? Um, psalm 118.1. I thought I had already changed that. All right. Um, what am I over here? Yeah, that's right. That's, all right, Psalm 118. Oh, uh, catechism notes here. Uh, this psalm is referenced in the Apostles' Creed, first article, part three of the, the first article, how do I thank and praise God? And in the second commandment, um, under a closer reading, um, um, how we are to, how we fear and love God by keeping the second commandment, we fear and love God by using his name. So, and that's what this is. This is giving thanks to the Lord. So Psalm 118, verses 1 through 9. Not the whole psalm. This is a 29-verse psalm. So uh, maybe the next time we'll start with verse 10 and, and go to 29. One through, 1 through 9. Oh, well, maybe not yet. Okay, now. We'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> Last night at the Reach Across meeting. That's one of the. That's kind of the evangelism group at at St. Paul. I picked out Psalm 69. I think it was. Help me from drowning. Um, and it and it goes on for I don't know 30, 40 verses of, of I'm drowning and I'm underwater and there's nothing I can do. But the Lord is good. Um, but sometimes that's the way it feels. Feels like we're drowning. Feels like we're drowning in 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 this world of which we are but sojourners here. So give thanks to the Lord. He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And that's a refrain here um, all through verses 1 through 4. Um, let Israel say, let the house of Aaron say, let the, those who fear the Lord say, the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. And that steadfast love is his is His chesed. I'm pretty sure that's that's Hebrew chesed. Yeah, it's chesed. Um, It's, it's a faithfulness that goes beyond, what shall I say, the human understanding of faithfulness, right? It, it, is, it is 
It is the, the, the equivalent of the Greek agape. It is God's love for his people to do for them um, according to his good and gracious will, without regard for, for anything else. It's, it's his love that forgives our sins in spite of the fact that we've sinned against him. Um, so the psalmist out of distress calls on the Lord and the Lord answers and sets him free, which he does, right? Uh, when we are in the midst of, of difficulty, of trial and tribulation, we can call on the Lord and, and he answers and he, and he restores us to strength. Um, he's on our side. It, 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 I, I wonder if, if Paul had this in mind when he says, if the Lord is with me, then who can stand against me? Right? Um, think of all the all the wars that were fought uh, by Israel in the in the Old Testament um, and Abraham too. I mean, when they were the Hebrews before before the birth of Jacob and before the naming of Jacob to Israel and his and his his sons who become the twelve tribes, they would go into a battle and the battle was won not by them but by the Lord. Yeah. The Lord is on their side. Right? Um, Gideon in the book of Judges, when he uh, goes out to battle and he's got he's got thirty thousand men that show up when he when he calls uh, calls the the men to battle. Thirty thousand men shows up and he sends um, <clears throat> what is it twenty thousand or something like that go home. Uh, and you know all who all who are concerned or worried or have children at home or something you're worried about or aren't sure about this, you go home according to the Lord's command. Uh, and then he took them down to the river, and the ones that drank one way um, were sent home as well, and the ones that drank the other way were remained with him 300 men. And and those 300 men entered into the the camp of, was it the Philistines they were? I don't remember who they were against, the Ammonites maybe. Um, but 300 men took out an army of thousands, camels numbering more than... Than the, than the sands by the sea or insects in the field. Um, so it is better to take refuge in the Lord. When, when we are in time of trouble, we don't look uh, to man to save us. We look to the Lord to save us. Better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Better to take refuge in the Lord than trust in princes. And, and no time is that more apparent than where we're at in our world today. Right? Our trust is in the Lord, not in... Not in Presidents, or congressmen, or representatives, or bureaucrats. Our trust is in, in God. Who get, Midianites? Thank you, Al. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Well, you know, Midianites, Ammonites, Perizzites, Jebusites. Anyway, yeah. So let us uh, let us continue here uh, with our reading for today, which is. Uh, letter to James, or let James' letter, St. James's letter, still in chapter 1, verses 16 through 21, 16 to 21. Not a big chunk. Um, yeah, this is, this is kind of, kind of interesting here. All right. So James writes, chapter 1, verse 16, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. There put away, therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive the meekness of the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, I, I said that the, one of the difficulties of James's letter is it's kind of he knows what he wants to say, but he writes kind of like I do. He's kind of, kind of like blip 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 blip, um, and and it's hard to follow how it ties together. Um, the 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 first sentence is a 
is a transition from what he was saying before, right? Yesterday he said the desire when his conceived gives birth to sin, sin when it's fully grown brings forth death. And so he was he was he was telling us that temptations come, but don't don't uh, don't give in to temptations. Don't give in to, to human philosophies. So don't do not be deceived, uh, my brothers. Make no mistake about this. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation of shadow due to change. See, and we've got, all of a sudden there, we've got two subjects we're looking at, two, two, two ideas, two concepts, two doctrines. Um, we've got that everything that is good comes from God. First article, gifts. Everything that is good, everything comes from God. It's not just what is good, but everything um, that is good. And I guess here we probably should consider that these good gifts of which he is speaking is is God's steadfast love, is, is the the gifts of his mercy and grace, um, of, 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 of being his children. Um, these are the good gifts, right? The things that are delivered in word and sacrament and that, that create and build up faith and strengthen us in our in faith towards Christ, towards God. Um, these are all coming down from the Father of lights. And then the Father of lights is, is God the Father, right? God is God is the source. Everything that is truly light and brings light comes from Him. No spiritual enlightenment, no knowledge of salvation uh, comes anywhere except from him. I think that's where we have to go with this, that, that, that our faith comes from him. And if our faith is, is coming from something else, from the philosophies of man, then, then there's a problem. Then there's a problem. Um, and these, the, what comes from him doesn't change, okay? The Lord, whether you, whether you want to talk about God the Father, God the Son, or God the Spirit, it's the same today, yesterday, today, tomorrow, unchanging, right? Oh, they like to say, some like to say that we have changed and, and what God has said no longer applies to us because we've evolved past blah, 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 blah. Well, that's just man's philosophy. That's darkness. Um, if, if God changes... If, if we were to allow that, right? If you were to set aside the truth and believe as they believe and try to follow that down the path, where you would find yourself is in darkness. Because if, 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 the, if, if we were to agree that the things that God has given us change, then where's, where is the promise? What happens to the promise? Um, from the, the, the promise of life eternal in Christ Jesus through the forgiveness of sins by the blood of Christ shed upon the cross, which has been the message of Scripture from the beginning um, until the fullness of time when Christ came until he returns again in glory and judgment. If it changes, then where does the change stop? What do we look for? Where is our confidence? Where do we find truth? It was Pilate who said, what is truth? But it was Jesus who said, those who hear my voice know me um, and know truth. My word is truth. His word is truth. And truth doesn't change. Man's philosophies, man's concepts, man's understanding changes. No question about that, right? Um, you know, there was a, well, just to take a take an example, um, there was a time in, in Luther's day that they thought spreading garlic on a piece of magnetic steel would remove its magnetic properties. Now, we know that's foolishness today from the standpoint of physics, um, but at the same time, that was 
a, 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 a it's not even philosophy, that's, that's physics, but that was a, a theory or an idea of mankind. Um, <laughs> nowhere in Scripture do we find putting garlic on steel makes it non-magnetic. But we do find in Scripture that faith in Christ saves, that salvation comes from God alone. We do find in Scripture that God gives us all good things, from, from the life we live, to the air we breathe, to the water we drink, to the food we consume, um, to the processes of our body, uh, and to the salvation that comes from Him alone. And the knowledge of that salvation, right? When you read the Scriptures, it is God the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who guides your, your thinking and points you to Christ Jesus, points you to the truth of Scriptures of the scriptures, of, 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 of the written word of God. And it is that same spirit that inspired those. So if anybody's going to help you understand what they are, why not the one who inspired them, right? Yeah, think about your grade school English classes when you'd read a text and you'd say, now what is, you know, the, the discussion was, now what does the author mean here when he says this, right? And so then you begin to speculate by human reason and philosophy, what the author meant. But we know what the author meant because he told us what he meant, even in the parables. Quite often Jesus gives the parables, speaking, speaking them to the crowds, and then explains them to the disciples. And he guides us to understand it. There is no variation or shadow due to change of his own will, of his own will. He brought us forth by the word of truth, Christ, that we should be kind of a kind of first fruits of, of creatures. Um, in Jeremiah, Israel, the Lord says this, Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest, all who ate of it incurred guilt and disaster came upon them. In Revelations, uh, if, if these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins, it is these who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb. That's not talking about physical purity necessarily, but, um, but it's, it's a reference to the first fruits. Um, what, is, what is a first fruit? Well, it's the, the first offering. Um, of what we have received. And so we have been given life in Christ Jesus, and, and he is the firstborn of the dead. We come next, but as a sort of first fruits of, of all his creation, of all his creatures. I wonder what Kretzmann says here about this. Um, um, uh, <laughs> the moon may have her phases and the sun his eclipses, but our God shines upon his spiritual children in undimmed glory. God's merciful countenance is never hidden from his children without change or interruption. He causes his face to shine upon us. And it's true. Um, I was looking for this, though. Yeah. In view of the grace of which we have become partakers, the apostle admonishes. You know that, my beloved brethren, let everyone be, oh, this, no, that's the next part. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. One of, here, one of, uh, da, 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 da. by faith we have been regenerated, born anew, become the children of God. And one of God's purposes in working this change in us was to have us be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. Well, that's what he said. Just as the first fruits of every harvest in Judea were consecrated the Lord, thus we Christians have been set apart from the sinful world to be creatures of God in whom the image of God is being renewed, through whom God is truly honored. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus uh, onto good works, to do the, the good works that he's given us. You know, think about that for a minute, though. It's not our doing, it's not of our doing that we are God's children. It's not of our doing that we are his creatures or his first fruits. He made us, so we are his creatures by his own will. And then he 
has he has reconciled us, restored us, renewed us, made us new in him, again of his own will, right? Not the will of the flesh or the or the, the will of man, but by the will of the Father, by the will of God, we have been made, made his children. He chose, he, the creators of the he- creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, by his own will, by his own decision, by his own strength and might, has made you his child, bringing us forth, that is, birthing us out of a life of sin, death, and, and, and destruction into his life by the word of truth, by baptizing you into his son who is that truth, that we should be a creature as first of his, a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, beloved, beloved brothers. And I, it, it is wonderful that, that James uses this phrase. I think Peter uses it quite a bit too. Beloved of the Lord, beloved in Christ. Well, I, I think John uses it as well. I'm not sure that you see it a lot in Matthew. But that idea of being beloved brothers, right? Um, when God speaks to Jesus uh, at his baptism, and again at the transfiguration, this is my beloved son with whom I well, am well pleased. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Um, he is the beloved, right? And we are baptized into, into him, into Christ Jesus. And if we are in him who is the beloved, then we also are the beloved of God. Beloved of Christ, beloved of God. So we can say to one another, even as James says to us here, know this, my beloved brothers, as a result of all this other, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. You know, it's amazing when man's philosophy and biblical truths line up. Um, I did my un- in my undergrad. Um, commu- I have a commu- a communications minor, and um, you talk about a lot of different things when you're talking about human communication. Um, but but one of them, one of the one of the most effective parts of communication is listening and, it, and it's very difficult for us to do as human beings we're very quick to respond uh, quite often we hear what somebody is saying and as they're talking we've already figured out what we're going to say as a response but active listening and the, the act of listening as, as well as active listening um, to, to hear what somebody else is saying to hear what God is saying to hear what our beloved brothers in Christ are saying is is wonderful and, and it's taught in many different Stephen Covey who's seven seven um, high, highly of well anyways it, it's a it's a management principles teaching but being being um, quick to hear and to listen in fact I wonder I wonder what the word is here. Um, Akusai, yeah, which is which is hearing and listening. It, it contains the ideas. Hearing and listening are not the same thing. Okay, I can I can hear a bird song, but if I'm listening to it, I hear I, I'm paying attention to the song. I can hear somebody talking. Um, I, I can hear the vibrations in the air of somebody speaking, but listening means I'm paying attention to the words they are saying and the meaning that's behind those words or that comes with those words. I'm, I'm communicating. So being, being quick to, to hear, to listen, is where we begin. And then slow to speak and slow to anger. I, my father used to say, and it probably still applies, that um, it wasn't unusual for me to uh, have my mouth in gear and my brain in neutral. That the words coming out of my mouth were in advance of my thinking. Um, but what we're being encouraged to do as Christians is to be 
quick at listening, close your mouth and listen, and be slow to speak, and even slower to anger, as our Lord is slow to anger, right? God is very, very patient with you and I. For the anger of a man does not prove, prove, produce the righteousness of God. Well, and that's true. We are not... Um, we are not... We are not... When we, we, it is possible to have righteous anger, right? But it's not common for human anger to be righteous before God. What would be righteous anger? Well, when the when the word of God is defiled, or the, the things of God are defiled. But usually when we're having conversations with one another, and this is what James is talking about, is as we live our lives in Christ, we're sometimes too quick to anger. And, and that anger, quite often, um, does not produce in us righteousness, but but sin, right? Hear one another. Don't be angry. Talk. Therefore, is this a resultant clause? Um, yeah, idea. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Now, where is he going with this? Well, we must not mistake um, this. We, we, are, we, are, um, we are tempted. And he's still thinking, he's got, still got temptations, tempted to be angry, right? He's still got temptations in his mind, the, the, the things that are not of our faith. Um, Oh, I see what happened here. I got, I got, I got, my paragraph got jumped. Um, yeah, we are, we are still tempted. Um, but every good gift has come down from God. And the temptation, if, if there's a temptation involved in those every, in those good gifts, then they are temptations to misuse that good gift. Um, to use our Christian freedom uh, in ways that that would offend God, just because we have 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 a freedom, and Paul talks about this a little bit with the eating of eating of meat um, presented to idols, um, that if it causes a weaker brother to fall, a weaker beloved brother to sin, then we ought not do it. Sometimes freedom means means that you have the ability not to do something. Um, Yeah. In view of the grace we've received from God, we are admonished to love one another. That's what this is. Um, and um, well, how do I want to say this? I'm 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 searching for words here, guys. So bear with me a minute. Um, When there is sin in the community of the church, in the body of, of Christ, there is a temptation to become angry um, and, and, and to argue or fight. Um, and certainly, if there is rampant sin, there is a condition to rebuke, but that rebuke is not done in anger, but in, in love. Um, and the one who is beloved in Christ ought be eager to hear that rebuke because quite often it's, they don't know. They don't know. So, um, self-control plays into those in Christ who see sin and desire to rebuke it, to hold that rebuke into a fold that rebuke into a loving response um, rather than letting anger which becomes hatred which becomes sin take him away um, and the one who is 
spoken to for the rebuke ought to be prepared to hear that rebuke and to change, to, as he says here, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with with meekness. Now this, uh, mm, we got to be careful with the word meekness, okay? Um, because uh, it, it will come up above. It will come up again. Um, but the But the idea of meekness here is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is the, the real use of meekness here, the real use of meekness in the Greek is the idea of someone who has the power uh, to fight and the strength to win that battle, but chooses never to take their sword out of the sheath. And, and that's, that's the meekness here. So receive with meekness, that is, with humility, str strength, but humility, the implanted word, the, the implanted righteousness of God that comes with Christ Jesus, which has the power to save your soul. The word of God, which has the power to save your soul, which is Christ, which is Christ. So set aside the filthiness and the wickedness in humility. Yes, you can win the fight if you want to put it to it, but instead rejoice in the grace of God given through Christ Jesus and receive that word in humility, that rebuke in humility. The rebuke should be given in humility and the rebuke should be received in humility so that we remain the beloved brothers in Christ Jesus. I mean, really what James is saying comes down to love the Lord your God with everything and your neighbor as yourself. And, and no matter which side, whether you are whether you are the one who thinks they're righteous, and if you do, you're probably not, or the one who is receiving rebuke. Give rebuke and receive rebuke in love. Love one another as Christ loved you. <laughs> so much that he gave his life for you on the cross. Amen. Amen. All right. Boy, that went a little long. Let's... Uh, continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this day, God of love, through your Son you have commanded us to love one another. And by the guidance of your word and spirit, deliver us from impenitence, and teach us the truth, that we might confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and be reconciled to one another. You resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Grant us true humility after the likeness of your only Son, that we may never be arrogant and prideful, and thus provoke your wrath, but in all lowliness be made partakers of the good gifts of your grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray also for those who are in need be it body, mind, or soul, whatever their suffering may be, even as that suffering comes as a gift from you to point them towards your Son and His grace and your mercy. We pray especially for those who have asked for our prayers on this day. Anne, Ashley, Cheryl, Chet, Carol, Dan, Dawn, Donna, Ezra, Jerry, Glenn, Jeremy, Judy, Karen, Keith, Lois, Lewis, 
Megan, Mike, Pat, Pee Wee, Rebecca, Reverend Owen, Robin, Rose, Sharon, Sophie, Stan, Tim, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Hear them for the sake of and in the name of Christ who died and rose again for us. This in his name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who accomplished all things, who created all things and accomplished them. On this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct the continuance of that day, and bless the ending of the day, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life be sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you as your beloved children. This through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, God's blessings, my friends, as we uh, go and attack to a Wednesday. And uh, we'll be back here tomorrow morning for our daily devotions again as we continue in the letter of St. James. God's peace be with you.